Okay, so I've been up since like two or something. I've already gone up, I've drank tea, I've had some biscotti, I've taken a bath. Oh, and I wanna say something about the biscotti thing is, you know, I know a lot of people, um, you know, complain about flour right now, but I think it's our system that's the problem. I don't know all of the stuff about flour, but I just think everybody should get it in their mind. Like during the depression, <clears throat> flour was like what got a lot of people through. Like you can actually make just things out of just flour and water. And a lot of people did that to survive. So, <clears throat> and the, I, I'm still doing that. Um, <clears throat> and the, I have been sneezing and sneezing. I know we're getting just dumped on. I, the sneezing and sneezing, I can always tell I get more hoarse. I get uh, way more snot. So, uh, and my eyes, my eyes are killing me. And I did see something. Um, somebody was talking, or let me probably didn't see, but heard or whatever. Something where somebody was saying, that was talking about the effect it has on your eyes. Well, see, my eyes already had damage from when they gave me the brain injury. It damaged my optic nerve. So, um, you know, I, I, that was a place that already was a weak point. And so when something is, uh, you know, what I've talked about, like it's going to attack the weak points in your body. So my eyes are just like, oh, it's horrible. I can't see. And it, um, the squinting gives me, I even have my sunglasses sitting here. I was like, I'll just put my sunglasses on if they keep bothering me. I don't want to look dramatic and silly. But um, anyways, I was thinking about, because uh, I had made these biscottis last night. A lot of stuff I've been making to eat, I'll just, like, I'll start eating and all of a sudden it's just like, ugh, it just tastes so yuck. Like, I really feel things are changing and moving. I don't, I mean, not moving, because people think, like, we're moving into this other dimensions, but it is our consciousness is an expansion. It's your mind opening. Like, that's what people don't get. Like, it is your consciousness beginning to absorb what's always been around you you stop focusing on this pretend world they created for you and you start focusing on what's real the supernatural world our real world where we're where we come from and then people still have so many limiting beliefs and you know it's it's the world that i've been telling people about my whole life and uh, and watching people waking up to it but there's still so much confusion and I, I just am really seeing this is, this is about people having their limiting beliefs, believing, you know, p paradigm storylines, you know, movies and stuff like that, instead of opening their minds and seeing what's out there around them, because it's always been there. You know, and I've been telling people aliens and ghosts and all this stuff is real forever. Bigfoot's real. I've been telling people and telling people and telling people and you get laughed and bullied. And, and then all of a sudden, all those people are now like, Oh my God, <laughs> there's a ghost. And I was like, they've always been there. <laughs> so, um, but so the biscotti, um, when I had made them, I was um, noticing this time I was really paying attention to the ingredients. And as a cookie, it is a lot more crackery, but it has a lot less sugar and a lot less fat than regular cookies. And, um, it, but it has a lot of flour in that ratio, you know, this is like a cup of flour, a half a cup of cocoa powder, um, uh, a cup of sugar and six tablespoons of butter and a couple of eggs. So it's like, it, it doesn't have a whole lot of ingredients and you put chocolate chips or nuts or whatever. Um, so it doesn't have a ton of ingredients, but you know, like I've been making bread, that's really filling. So I think some of these things, you know, people have to think about what can they make with limited resources and survive. Excuse me, lady. God, she always has to get up and join me. She's been following me around all morning since 2.30. <laughs> I had written a bunch of stuff down this morning because um, I, I think that's part of the reason why I'm up is they just start filling my head full of stuff and giving me so much insights into things. It's like a conversation starts happening in your head. And, but it is like what I thought those kids in that one movie called the knowing, 
I thought that was a good explanation of saying it's like whispering. They kept saying it's like whispering because it is. It is like a whisper talking to you and you have to listen like, what? What did you say? But they show you things and tell you things and explain things to you. But they do have a certain time of communicating and where it's really loud. And then you, um, you know, but it's during a time when we normally sleep. So, but that's where a lot of people get, you know, visitations in their dreams and all that stuff. It's an active time <laughs> for your consciousness and other conscious beings and communications. So anyways, there was so much, you know, chitter chatter. But I know that's, you know, it's my mission. I can't complain about it because I know that's why I'm here. I know that this is what I'm here to do. And so um, one of the things I was thinking about, there was a, so many things and I was I had to start writing stuff down. But um, so... One of the things I was thinking about was um, the refrigerator. So I was thinking about, um, okay, so it seems so basic because it's still running. And all I did was turn the thermometer thing up. And it's weird because I was trying to pull the fridge out after it happened. I was like, I got to pull the fridge out. I got to unplug it. You know, like the Roku, like the phone, got to turn it off. And then it will restart itself. So I was thinking like that. So then you start thinking about like how our brains get programmed to these, like this just keeps getting bombarded in my head, showing how the, the programming works and how we, um, we have certain things that we think and believe because we're told to think and believe them a certain way. So it just goes into our head and we don't ask questions about it. We just accept it and it becomes how we think, how we absorb information, how we follow, you know, the, the trail, the, the road to where we're going. So with um, that, and then I asked, you know, the small, um, what are those things called? can work on small motors appliances and stuff like that because he does hvac and i don't know i mean i know that some of the mechanics stuff like a lot of mechanics if they know how to work on one thing they know how to work on other things because they just understand how machinery works so um he's the one who told me well turn up the thermostat and see if it comes on i hadn't even thought of that like why would i even think that the thermostat, like the fridge and the freezer both went off and the light was still on in the fridge. So, you know, it's like, why would I even think that, oh, well, if I turn it up, it'll start. It didn't even, I didn't think that at all. And then he told me something so easy and so basic and then turn it up and it keeps running. I think I had to turn it up a little bit more one day. Um, like, I'm still not sure if the thermostat is giving out, but so far it's been running for a couple days and it's staying cold. But I hadn't even thought about that whole thing about just turn the, turn that thermostat up. I'm sitting here trying to pull the fridge out so I can unplug it. I'm trying to reach back there so I can pull the plug and I was getting so frustrated and, uh, I was even going to just turn off all the electricity of the whole house. And then I it was like, okay, I'm just going to start trying to get a hold of somebody and ask them if they know about, you know, small appliances or large appliances or whatever, these kind of motors. And, um, you know, just something so simple can expand your awareness like that. And one thing I, you know, after I got my brain injury, you know, and they said, oh, your IQ went down, look significantly. And I would be out. And I would be talking to people, you know, when I would be like, if I was talking in a crowd, there would always be where people would be talking and I couldn't keep up with what they were talking about. I would be like, what are they talking about? What are they talking about? What happened? You know, I couldn't, and they'd all be chattering. And so I would make me feel kind of insecure. Like I couldn't keep up with the conversation. So, you know, that kind of had me pull back a little from that. And then I, I and I was even, you know, I would even tell people like disclosure, <laughs> I've got a brain injury because it made me feel so insecure. And, um, you know, like you just start, start talking different. Like, um, I, you know, I talk different now than I did before. Um, how, you know, I try and get my words and stuff like that. It's just different. And so it makes you insecure. You know, it makes you self-conscious 
when you know you have these new deficits, right? And, and I couldn't recognize people. And people's faces kept changing. Like even people I knew and their face kept changing. And I, I, so I had these things that were weird. I couldn't keep up with time at all. I couldn't get the concept anymore. And numbers, I started, you know, numbers became so jumbly. I couldn't, I couldn't keep them all separate. And then when they were doing all these tests to try and figure out, you know, especially because I was trying to keep my nursing license. So I had to go through so much testing um, for all of that stuff. Uh, Cause my, uh, I, where I worked, they weren't going to let me back until a doctor said, and all the doctors were putting me through tons and tons of tests. And they said that I, um, my IQ had gone down so much. And so I was like, and scared about that. But then I would go out and I would talk to people and I kept telling my mom, I, I kept saying like, you know, what's weird is I still feel like I'm smarter than most of the people. Like, this is weird. I don't get it. So it's really making me understand something different about intelligence. Like, it's, um, it's the same thing as like a piece of paper. It's like where they tell you to value intelligence. It's like, you know, somebody who can go in and um, read five books in a minute does not make them, uh, you know, more intelligent if they have no awareness. If they have no awareness and they don't know what's going on around them. So I, I think it has to do with awareness. And I think it has to do with this whole awakening thing. And one thing too is, you know, while I've been in quarantine watching so many documentaries, there was this one that I watched on Gaia Channel called, called Sensitivity. And it was talking about, uh, you know, because all the labels and disorders and stuff like that. And um, I was explaining this whole thing. Now this doctor or something has discovered that they labeled the people sensitives or something, which when I was watching, I was like, oh, this is what I am. And um, I'm sure a lot of people who are kind of in touch with themselves are this way. But they also have this ability, like what I talk about with the attention deficit, if paying attention to a whole lot of things and observing and, um, you know, like a kind of, um, it kind of reminds me of in the movies where it shows those army guys with those big goggle things on and it's evaluating all this stuff really fast and showing them all that. Well, some of us just were like that naturally just go into a room and you're like observing and you're noticing and you, you know, like you can pick out who's having an affair and who's hiding something. Like you can just, you have an awareness, you pick up on stuff. And wouldn't that be something that we should consider to be intelligence, to be able to read a room like how many people have you been around who just can't even like they don't even notice that somebody doesn't like them at all and they keep trying to push themselves on them with no awareness of that and um so you know i think that the value of this intelligence you know is is not what we need to fully be focused on of um I think it's not something that we can measure like that because I think it has something to do with just paying attention and and not limiting how you look at things to try and be broad in your perspective and aware, aware of other people's experiences, but not caught up in other people's experiences, not judging other people's experiences, but have the awareness how other people are being affected. So many people that are so self-involved don't even realize how other people are being affected even by their actions. They have no awareness. They think, oh yeah, these people are doing great. They don't, they're not bothered. And it's like the people who are being bothered are very, very bothered. And the other people have no awareness. Like all this stuff is being shown to us. It's all coming to the surface so that we think about it and look at it. And, you know, I keep seeing these videos of these people, um, th these religious people, I would say, or, you know, the ones who are waiting for their uh, savior to come save them. And they're very, you know, oh, the Bible says this and our Lord Jesus Christ, savior of all humanity will be here. And, 
you know, they go through their whole thing. And, um, but now there's so many of them who are attacking, uh, you know, as people who are spiritual or, you know, whatever, they've got all the different labels to label people who are more aware and, um, of the other realms, the other worlds around us, the other beings around us. And they, um, but they don't have that awareness. So they think that it is, it doesn't really exist or something. Like uh, the way that this girl was explaining it yesterday, I saw, and she was just like, oh my God, I felt like I was watching an episode of The Village or something. I, I thought, you know, they're about to have the Salem witch trials all over again. This is nutty. And um, but the, the, so we're moving. The veil is thinning, which is releasing. Like they think we're moving up in dimensions. We're moving up. We're, we're moving dimensions. Like our planet is moving dimensions. And it is um, making it where the veil is thinner. I don't even understand how they think. Like, how how do they put this stuff together? Okay, so the veil is thinning, but our planet's moving. And as the veil thins, it's allowing all of these ghosts and demons. That's what you got to fear is the demons. The demons are coming in in mass. I mean, they're just coming at us. <laughs> and um, so we're, this, this thinning veil is, you know, I mean, you've got to be really careful, guys. I mean, we've got demons coming in. They're all around us. They're out to get us. And, you know, and there's even a whole thing about that as the veil thins, Jesus' soul is leaving the planet so I guess it's only to return to save them, but we're, they've got to be very concerned because all the demons are coming in at the same time Jesus' soul is leaving the planet. It's like, what the hell is this? I'm telling you, that's where, where I'm like all the time, like this, they believe in these fairy tales that don't make any sense. So to me, it is this awareness you know, and people keep themselves cut off with their limiting beliefs, so they have no awareness. But this world has always been around us. I've been talking about this world since I was a little kid. You know, I've been telling people about all of this stuff forever. And, you know, that I've always known it was there. And when people would tell me it wasn't there, you know, and even be bullied, laughed at, and stuff like that, I would always think, like, what is wrong? I wasn't going to conform. I mean, how can you go against what you know? And so I could, I it was always confusing me until 2020 when I saw what is happening with the manipulation and stuff. That was so mind opening for me because when you're sitting there telling people and nobody can see it and they're, I, that just was very opening. Uh, but now, you know, how I see that it is this, the moving through dimension is like, Stop looking at the three-dimensional little dollhouse pop-up book thing and just start expanding your mind as to opening it and you see what's around you. That is the expansion is in our minds. It's our minds opening. It's not moving and going places and veils opening. And it's us that is thinning the veil. It's us awakening that the, the veil becomes thinner because we no longer see it. We are seeing through it. We have the veil. That's why I said before, too, of like this realm, the earth realm, and this reality, and in the firmament, in the ice ring around us, in our energy, because this is all energy. This is a projection. This is a theater, like what I've said before. And it's like a, a multiplex theater with tons of plays happening all around it. And energetically, Everybody is all of a sudden realizing like, wait a minute, we're in a theater? And then that energy is going to be what rocks and explodes. I mean, it's already thinning the veil just by people waking up. The veil isn't, uh, the veil is, is there, um, it's like a protection. You know, it keeps the low energy out. But it, it, there's, it's not holding back demons. It's not like all the demons are around the veil waiting like, rah, 
wait till it's just thin enough for me. It's like, that is not what's going on. The, the veil is in your mind. The veil is, you know, it's hard to explain stuff when people see things so three-dimensionally. It's hard to, because you know, like, the stuff that you say sounds crazy unless you understand it on the level that I'm talking about. But everything is in the mind. Everything is the consciousness. Everything happening is so that we are having this expansion, this evolution, this awakening, and seeing not by limiting beliefs, which automatically makes the veil go away, which energetically we create this expansion. And so that is what takes down all the barriers that hold us in, like micro, macro, all the barriers that we are held in with by our own consciousness is the movement that is the creation of this change, this, you know, magnificent change that we're all, you know, waiting for is how people are in 3D and 4D, 5D, all in the same place. It's because it's not a place. It is a state of mind. It is how your mind is accepting information. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've just seen it for so long. It, how people limit themselves. Oh, there's no aliens. You know, uh, who <laughs> I've, I've been told so many times of, uh, oh, Stephen Hawking, he said there's no aliens. There's no aliens. It's like, they're, what? Uh, there is no Bigfoot, uh, you know. I, all of this stuff that I have been told for so long, uh, you know. And my mom is religious, so I have been told a million times, like, oh, don't talk to them, they're devils. She even thought that I had devils um, attached to me at one point. But that is, you know, that's the only way that their mind can can accept the information. They can't think outside the box. That's the only thing that their mind can accept that makes sense to them because of their own limitations. It is breaking down the limitations. And another thing, too, is, like I've said before, how many of these people are going to find out that it was their biases, their own judgment of others is what held them back. I mean, when you have these people who are triggered, like they see someone in a baseball cap, oh, wow, that guy has no value, or someone with face tattoos, oh, that one has no value, ah, oh, don't listen to what he says, or somebody who has rainbow hair, oh, don't listen to them, or somebody who has flag clothes on, ah, mm-mm, no, they're crazy. You know, um, they've they've done that. They've created all that in people. So they, they create all these biases and judgment towards each other. And they don't realize that's what's holding them back. That's what is holding them back in this as things progress. I had a guy, um, I have commented, I, I think I shared the one where the guy is talking about his experience like after he got his um, things and losing his taste buds and it was lining up with what that doctor had said. And so I made a comment. So you make a comment on some of these things and there's certain people who look for hashtags to argue with. And so they come in and this guy literally starts, I think his, his argument is, um, oh, I might've said something to him first. I don't know, whatever. It could have been I commented on his comment in this conversation because I was just so mind blown. It could have been this one because it was um, this person said that it was something like I've had I don't know, several of these. I've had the Dovic like six times. I've, you know, this and that and I'm perfectly fine. Like, ah, oh, everybody's perfectly fine. This is all in our crazy wackadoo heads. That there's no problem here. You know, he's he's living proof. I'm just like, oh my God, I wouldn't go around bragging about that. Like, I mean, there's a lot of people that go around bragging about that stuff and then keel over the next day. I was like, I wouldn't be doing that. But, um, and then I said, um, you know, you might want to check your lot number and see what's in it. And, um, you could probably go up to any computer now that you're chipped and download and see you know, like, 
what you've got. Well, I just got him going, I guess, because he, he just kept on saying stuff. But when you see, like, how some of these people think, like, he's telling me, I, I think he must be Canadian, because he started telling me about, in Canada, they are um, killing all the chickens because they have salmonella. So don't tell me the government's not trying to help. <laughs> like, what the? What? You see how you can look at things very differently. So I, some of the stuff he just kept saying, I, I was after, you know, a couple of these comments back and forth. I was like, dude, I am energetically drained from this conversation. I hope you're right for your sake, but have a great day. <laughs> Bye. I don't have it in me to sit and argue with some of these people. Yesterday, I had um, that one... Um, little clip up out of that movie um the tinder bar and um you know i was just like what the hell why do they keep showing these inaccurate things from our history like these two biracial couples just sitting here like you know it's no big deal this is just everyday thing back in the early 80s and even the one couple would have been from the 60s and i was like this is so weird this is so inaccurate like it, there, this was not normal. And I put that on, um, TikTok and, um, <coughs> God, I'm wheezing. A lot of people were, um, uh, always these young people that, you know, didn't live any time during that, but they're going to come in, you know, guns a blazing. And they've got it all figured out. It's like, ah, oh, you didn't even live then. Uh, but you know, this arrogance that they've filled their minds with. And, um, so he, um, what was I just saying? Just a second. Let me think back what I was saying. I had to get my little snotty comment and it threw me off. See? Um, so, um, oh yeah, that video. So I, um, kept having these people who would say stuff like <laughs> just jackassery. And uh, I was like exhausting my brain. It was like energetically draining me to even comment and say anything back. I was like, how, how stupid some of these people are like with their arrogance and their limiting beliefs and stuff like that. And they think they're so fucking smart. It's like, that's what I'm saying. What is smart? What is intelligence? Like we're seeing it in a very different way. So, um, then this one girl, she comes on and she goes, uh, that's the tinder bar. That is, uh, um, uh, what did she call it? That's somebody, not synopsis. Um, uh, when you like keep your life record or something, you know, your memoir, that is somebody's personal memoir. That's their personal story. So that was true in their life. I was just like, oh, I just took it down. I was like, I don't even have any energy. I'm not going to sit and argue with these people. Like, they want to keep trying to prove that, like, this world is normal. There's no, nothing to see here. Nobody is out to get you. They're not programming you through the TV. They're not, like, all of a sudden putting a million biracial couples on the TV. It's like, if you even are trying to get some movie made or a show made or something, you have to put in a, it's a certain amount. You have to have, there's guidelines. I don't know this guy's personal story. I wasn't there. I don't know if this was really a part of his life, this being around biracial couples. But I do know that Hollywood will tell you, Will I, I just watched a movie about this the other day too. It was... Um, welcome home or something it was with Reese Witherspoon and she had these three up and coming writers that came to start living with her and she was a famous director's daughter and he died and so they bonded over their love for her her, her dad and so it's about these writers and they go to meetings and stuff with the producers the money guys and they're, oh, uh, well, you know, I, I think it would be a really, I, I like the story. The story's got a lot of potential, but I, I think what we need to do, you know, you want money to pay for your show. They're going to tell you what you need to do, you know, and if they are pushing an agenda and they need there to be some biracial couples, bet your ass there's going to be some biracial couples. It's not by, by accident that they pick which memoirs, if that, if that was a true part, or if they said, hey, we need a couple of 
biracial couples in here. So you got a lesbian in there, you know, it's like, you got to see like what is going on. But these people just want to keep arguing and arguing and hold on to this world. Like, it's like, oh my God, keep on holding on, you know. You play that deck until it's, I, I don't have the energy for the the nonsense. Like you want to keep on trying to convince me, nothing to see here, all's good. We got a great life going, quit complaining about it. It's like, well, you obviously will accept a lot more abuse than I will. And uh, you want to live by your limiting beliefs and, and your judgment and your biases and stuff. That's on you. Uh, but you know, I'm not, I'm not there anymore. <laughs> you know, like I've said, I'm, I'm, I've exited the building. I'm, I'm headed to the age of Aquarius. I don't have time for these people who want to keep on believing this nonsense and trying to convince the rest of us. Like if you can't see that what these people have done for their whole entire life, they've been poisoning you, making you sick so that they can live off of you. They sell your energy. They lie to you about your very state of being. They manipulate every single thing in their reality that they created to hold you captivated. And it's your own ego that keeps you captured by your drive for getting something outside of you instead of working on what's inside of you. They have you captivated and motivated by everything outside of you. These people running around changing their bodies so they can look like a Kardashian. And, you know, they got to have money in this weirdo lifestyle that they're constantly trying to sell you is going to bring you happiness. Oh, this will bring you happiness. No, it won't. Find somebody who's gotten it. It's not going to bring you happiness. You have to start seeing things in a broader perspective. That's what everything is about. It's an expansion. Your consciousness opening up. It's expanding your thinking. Looking outside the box. Leaving the sandbox. Playing. Taking up the whole yard. Maybe go out over the gate. Maybe expand out into the forest. Like there's so much out there. There's so much around you. And it's all these people's limiting beliefs that has kept them, you know, created in this little tiny world that they participate in the creation of. So, you know, this is a time of expansion. This is a time of, uh, this is the great awakening. And, you know, all I can say, I know anybody who comes in and listens to me, uh, you know, chatter knows exactly what I'm talking about. This is just like confirmation for them. They can see it. You know, we can all see it. And it's definitely hard to watch others. And it is, it is exhausting at this point. It is just energetically, emotionally exhausting. It's like how... What, how, why do you want to stay so trapped mentally? Why do you want to keep believing that the government's there to save you? Why do you want to keep believing this, this book that they told you was about God? Why can't you see how much it limits you? It's just like, oh, uh. but you know, this is an individual awakening and this is all about the soul. And, you know, even me getting frustrated is just me getting caught up in the 3D illusion. And that's why I've got to just let it go and not focus on that stuff. Even though I, I'll say that, but there will be something else that will come up. And I think it's because, you know, they want me to talk about some of this stuff. They want people to think about some of this stuff. They wouldn't make me, you know, fill my head with it and show me in shows and just keep bombarding me with stuff until I go and talk about it. So, um, you know, I know that they want this information out there. And like I've said, I've seen other people saying some of the same information that I'm saying. So I know, you know, this, this is, you know, a huge scale operation and there's so many things. Oh, there's another thing too I wanted to say that I kind of really got a different kind of insight into was um, I keep seeing people sharing um, Trump telling that snake story. Oh, what, it was a couple of years ago. And he kept telling this snake story about you, you, it came in and it bit you and you let it in. I can't remember the whole story. It's like, I don't know, kind of like a proverb or something, you know, one of those kinds of stories. And, um, now, 
now it kind of gives you a different like ooh, different kind of look at that story but there was so much you know i mean that was one thing that the that letter you know um it's after r or whatever it's the letter you can't speak that will take you down off of a platform but that letter that was saying all the time open your mind think outside the box think in a broader spectrum think in bigger terms said that all the time that was one thing i noticed when i would hear people breaking down what they were saying he kept saying think outside the box think bigger you know expand how you're thinking of things and and now you know just that is making so much more sense so anything every everything is coming together the pieces are all coming together you know um and this is it really is a huge um endeavor you know waking people up and um you know this whole awakening and this whole transfer over to abundance and uh, the golden age i mean this is this is this is a huge time that we're alive in and it's really exciting even though it feels perilous at this <laughs> these moments it feels like oh my god how will i ever get through this but um once we do it's gonna be so much better and you see like i mean of course this is great i mean it's opening people's minds it's opening their hearts it's making them have compassion and empathy and insight so you know it's a great thing and we do need to go through this process because we can't have the new world be like the old world the old world was not anything that we would want any part of in the new world so and another thing too is i saw this girl i think she was um you know we're generation x uh, and i don't know how old she was because i was like man how old is this girl she looks like she's my age but i'm not generation x or z because now i'm a boomer you know i got moved into that category when they were rearranging things and um, but the um i'm not sure what she is and i couldn't tell by the look of her but she was like ah oh, like um uh, what is that like anarchy <laughs> and she's like our generation will burn it down fuck it all we don't give a fuck we will fucking burn it down and i was just like well you know we we do need all the generations to work together you know we've got the peace love you know we can make things better we got the ones that are ready to burn it down and we got the ones that are ready to build something new like all of us are bringing in something and that's why we all need to come to the table and you know accept one another and work together and i mean what would we do if we were all generation x and we're gonna burn it down we would have nothing left you know we need us all we all need to come together that is how we create something new and everybody has to go through this process you know to get them out of their arrogant ego and move them into a place of compassion and love so that we can build a world where we all feel happy and satisfied and complete and you know it's not this doggy dog everybody there's one bone over here <laughs> who can get here the fastest it's like this world has not been to make you feel good it's been here to teach you it's been here so you can learn so now it's like we've learned and we're gonna go to the celebration and that's where i'm headed so i'll talk to you later bye